ni kukuambia pole sana kwa maafa ya bwana yako Daniel Muthiani alaya sniper lakini kuna swali ambayo ningependa ueleze senate ama hawa waheshimiwa kuhusu hii pebil number 247247 account number 04001639178 99 Hiyo account number ama pebil ya matanga ama mazishi ilifunguliwa na nani Mr. Okay. Uh, Veronica Yes Proceed I have asked her questions Who opened this pebil number 247247 Account number 04001-639-17899. Hiyo account abayo ilipata pesa 286,560. Nani ya liifungua? Mimimi. Nwe ulifungua? It was initiated by the sniper friends and the bloggers, but I was the one who is responsible of the account. Kwa hivyo wewe ndio ulikuwa unaangalia balance ya pesa zile imepata. Yeah, and the notifications were being forwarded to me. Um, Senator Veronica address uh, the speaker. Yes, uh, through, through the speaker kuna kuna control yoyote ambayo governor alipewa Are you able to respond to that question? Your question is, is, is made, Senator Veronica. Take your seat. You have asked the question. Allow the witness to respond to that question. Okay, Mr. Speaker, sir, a honorable member, I would answer the question to my senator. We heard the, as, I, as I've said again, the pay bill was initiated by the friends of sniper and the bloggers. I was the one who was accountable of the pay bill and the notifications were being forwarded to my phone and the account, I'm the holder of the account. Thank you. I think that question is answered. Um, Senator Mutinda. Nianze kukupatia pole zangu kwa kumpoteza mume wako sniper. Swali langu nimeona katika video kana kwamba uh, ulikerwa sana wakati gavana alieleza ya kwamba uliweza kupokea milioni taslimu uh, 86 na kana kwamba unaishi na MCA moja wa pale kaunti ya Meru. Hatua gani ulichukua uh, ku Weze, kuweza kuondoa maneno haya ambayo kulingana nawe sio maneno ya kweli ulichukua hatua gani kwa kizungu ile tunasema ku clear the air asante bwana speaker mr speaker sir and the honorable senators that's why i'm here today i want to send light to the whole house and to the kenyans that I don't know that amount and again missi kufitwa na MCA fulani. Senator Olekina. Mr. Speaker, I do not have a question for this witness. However, I do have a question for the attorney of the county assembly in regards to the same issue. It's the same issue. It's the same, same issue. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there is a witness, but I need some clarification on the same issue of the 86 million, but not from the witness standing, but from the lawyer. Okay, it's the same issue. So you want to seek clarification from, from the lawyer? Yes. I'm speaking. Take your seat, uh, then, uh, so that that opportunity will be av okay. made available. That's fair enough. All right. But but now, Mr. Speaker, I think you are mixing things because we are asking on the same matter of the eighty-six Senator million. Ledama. So if you are going to take, take your seat. time for the lawyer, take that's your fine. seat.
Ist nicht der Best? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kwanza nakupa pole. Ah, uh, ninajua ni hali ngumu. Swali langu pia lingeenda kwa wakili sio kwa kwa madam. Very well, Sorry. very well, Senator Beth. Uh, any other member I have got from my dashboard three members and I do not want members to complain. If there is none then the witness is discharged. Let's call upon uh, the second last witness, Ms. Linda Kiome. Give Senator Ria the mic. Mr. Speaker, under Article 181 and the third schedule on the process of removing the governor, would I be in order to make an application that we stand down this witness and have the mover of the motion come back for clarity of the House? Would that be in order, Mr. Speaker? And uh, I would request to move that motion and request Senator Ladama to second me, Mr. Speaker. We can rewrite the, we can write the rules. Take your seat. Uh, you're because out of there order. are many issues that we need to clarify. Take your seat. You're out of order. Uh, anyone with... Um, any specific clarification you would like to have uh, from witness? Senator Mbugwa. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, Senator, Senator Muma, I have given the opportunity to Senator oh. Mbugwa. I will give it to you after you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just two quick clarifications from Juan Linda Kikiome. Uh, you served as a, an advisor to their governor for one year. I would want you to tell this uh, house how the communication from the governor and your response was done because, uh, so that we can be able to interrogate this matter. And two, during this one year you served as the governor, this issue of the appointment of the boards was a rife butter. Did the governor ever seek an advisory from you on how to deal with it and how did you respond? Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, thank you, Senator, for that question. Uh, when I was appointed by the governor, I was almost due to have my third baby. So her directions were that I should come back after my maternity leave was over. That was in the month of September and I did come back. So from September, when I came back, she advised that I should work under the CACM for legal affairs, Mr. Dixon Monene. And she had instructed Senator that she will, I will be working on a need basis. When she requires my advice, she would call me. The only time the governor called me was when the, the second impeachment came up. Out of the respect that I have for the governor, and of course, advocate-client relationship, I would withhold to disclose the information, or rather, the advice that she sought from me. I owe her that much. Thereafter, after the impeachment, that is when she called me to her office in Meru just before Christmas and asked me to resign. Therefore, our relationship got sour. In fact, immediately after the third, the second impeachment, and there was no further communication from the governor until 
I believe the 26th of March this year. In between, the CECM, Mr. Dixon Monene, kept pressuring me to resign. So I felt that, Honorable Senator, if the governor has said that she will seek legal advice from me on a need basis, at no time did she ask me about the legality of any appointments of the boards in the Meru County government. And there is no written advisory I have given the governor within that period of time. The nature of the advice... Council Linda, uh, make sure your responses and respond directly to the question. All right? Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. I stand guided. Did I cut you short or you were done? I was, I was on the last uh, issue where I was saying that the nature of the legal advice that she had sought was verbal and she had asked me to go to her home to give her the legal advice. Thereafter, any other advice I was giving was through the CECM, Mr. Dixon Monene. Thank you. Uh, Senator Muma. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question to the witness. Uh, you are a former legal advisor to the governor. You have sued the governor. We understand that did not, uh, is not uh, very apparent. Now, did you see the need to declare conflict of interest? in coming to give evidence against uh, somebody whom you've had advocate-client relationship and whom you are advising. I, I didn't hear you declare that when you were called on the, on the witness box. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you very much. Honorable Senators, I said in my submission that I came to clear my name from an allegation of giving mediocre advice to the governor. I am an advocate of many years of practice. Ordinarily, in the very least, I would have at least written my name at the end of that advisory. I came here to clear my name for future prospects. And I indicated that very clearly when I was giving evidence. I did not um, withhold any information regarding to my relationship with the governor. Very well. Um, any other? Senator Mugatana? Mr. Speaker, just a, a, a quick clarification. Um, the witness may need to tell us what is the probative value of her denial as we stand now uh, because it is not accompanied by a forensic document examiner who can back up her assertions because it is Howard against the word of the, of, of the governor, I mean the letters that were there. So uh, who do we believe uh, without expert support and how, how 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 do we go about it how how do we decide within the time constraints that we have i submit uh, mr speaker linda mr speaker sir thank you honorable members of the senate i believe that my cause to come and to make a request to attend this session was first of all for my own future prosperity that I had indicated earlier, I would not have wanted to be associated with that kind of advisory. 
Number two, I got this information while I was in Mombasa. The first time I saw the document was on WhatsApp yesterday at about 2 p.m. That is the first time I saw it. Number three, I have yet to see the original document, at least. Can it even be supplied before the Senate? Because I know they have lifted that signature from another document. Let them be tasked to produce the original document of that advisory or internal memo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Omtata. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Land Council, I just want a clarification on your signature. Did you say that the signature on the advisory was not yours? Or did you say the signature was similar to yours? Or did you say the signature was lifted from other documents you had signed? because you made a reference to all the three, and maybe clarify for me which one is which. Thank you. Linda? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, honorable members, I was very categorical that I did not sign that document. Hence, making a conclusion that that signature was lifted from other documents that I have signed. And that is why I'm asking, can I be provided with an original document? Because what we have is a photocopy. And I know with a clean heart, I have not signed that document and I have not prepared it. Senator Sergei. Mr. Mr. Speaker, through you, uh, Council. The governor in some of the charges, he have, she has been accused of appointing a number of chairpersons, Meru County Revenue Board, Meru Microfinance Corporation, Meru Youth Service Board, and Meru County Investment. You are legal advisor to the governor. In your own opinion, or did you at any point give advice to governor to comply with both county legislation and national legislation on the importance of appointing the chairpersons of these uh, corporations, and finally, Having been a running mate of uh, the governor's opponent, I heard you saying you enjoy cordial uh, relationship. Is that still the case? Do you, you, uh, you say you hold the governor in high regard? Absolutely. And uh, did you seek in conclusion, Chair, before the governor appointed you to that position, did you seek the blessings of your former uh, uh, former uh, gubernatorial candidate, uh, Senator Mitika Linturi. I thank you, Chair. Uh, before you answer that, Linda, Senator Veronica, so that you, uh, you uh, answer both questions. Uh, could the witness clarify how many legal advisory opinions she proffered to the governor during her short stint, and whether when she discovered according to her, that her, type, her signature had been used without her consent, whether she took any action to forestall a criminal activity of forgery or using her signature without consent. How many opinions did you prefer which were official? What's your point of order, Senator Edi? Mr. Speaker, I, I, I rise under uh, Eight, point of order eight, eight, and and, and Mr. Speaker, uh, and and the rules that are, that are, that are related to this, Mr. Speaker, where we have got any evidence, where we cannot be able to interpret that evidence, our rules require that we must get an interpreter. On this issue of signature. You've seen it bouncing from one senator to another, and it's not clear. Mr. Speaker, don't you think, through your honor, Mr. Speaker, that there is need to examine or get an examiner for the signature? Or there is need to examine the lifting as the 
evidence is being given by the witness. Because otherwise, then we cannot be able to pronounce ourselves on the broader allegation of that particular fraud. Senator Eddie, if uh, you followed the sequence of uh, the evidence the witness gave and the questions which have uh, gone through from cross-examination to now, it's a matter of her objecting to the document having been signed by her, and that is what the honorable members are seeking clarification on. Your concern is as good as the concerns that the rest of the members have raised. And I do not think in these circumstances we need any expert examination of what uh, she, as a witness, is saying, I did not sign. Nonetheless, let her allow, let's allow her to respond to the questions by Honorable Chiragay and Senator Veronica. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members. As I said, the governor advised that I could only give any legal advice on a need basis. As an advocate, you cannot solicit to give advice. You can only wait to be requested for the advice. When the third impeachment, the second impeachment came in about uh, November of 2023, the governor called me in her residence. And before that, I was in Kakamega and she called me through the telephone and she asked for certain legal advice, which as I said before, I am restricted through advocate-client relationship, and out of the respect that I have for the governor, not to disclose uh, the, the information, or rather the advice that she required. There, soon thereafter, soon thereafter the impeachment, that is when she called me and asked me to resign. So it means our relationship did not last long, and I was shocked yesterday, while in Mombasa, in Ukunda, Dianyo, where we were attending an annual conference for LSK, I was sent for a copy of that document. It was the first time that I saw that document. I had to travel with a small baby at night so that I could come and see whether I would be allowed to clear my name out of that document. When I came, I submitted before that I went to the Parliament Police Station and the OCS informed me, in fact, he called the DCI and they said, I can only make a report in Meru where the issue had arose. And I said earlier, that I am going to pursue because I believe that the truth shall set me free. Even if a document examiner was to come here, for sure he will exonerate me. And I am speaking the truth and only fearing God only. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Linda. Um, any other person? We are actually out of the 15 minutes time we had granted to this uh, clarification. And uh, I do not uh, seem to, Senator Beatrice, you have a question to the council. That will be the last uh, uh, member. I'm granting this opportunity so that we close on this witness. OK, my initial, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. My initial uh, comment was that the burden of uh, proving forgery is actually on who alleges the forgery. So uh, Linda needed to have submitted evidence of, uh, that it is not her signature. However, uh, Linda, you were a legal advisor to the governor at some point. Uh, and you know, in the Constitution, there is alternative dispute resolution methods are scattered for are scattered for in the constitution. Did you at one point advise the governor on 
any alternative uh, dispute methods that you could that could have been used to resolve this running law running dispute and if you did uh, what attempts were made Linda I want you to respond to that question in under one minute thank you mr. speaker I would say in my relationship with the governor the governor has been very secretive the governor has not been consulting much and my options were very very limited he, she is my employer and she says i will only come to you when i need to limited only so even if you ask me for a written legal opinion that i have written in that short period of three months i would say i do not have because the governor also say that I should work with the CECM of legal affairs. I can produce documents that I have prepared on behalf of the CECM, but for the governor, I only, she only allowed me to advise her during the second impeachment. And I can confirm, I even attended the High Court at Meru before the Court of Appeal judges that were hearing her matter in the Meru High Court. That is sufficient. Uh, honorable members, that brings us to the end of the clarification session that we had with the witnesses. And uh, Linda, you can uh, take your leave. You are released. And we Thank have you. the last witness, uh, Mr. Jacob Kirari. And honorable members, I believe you have uh, been served with a copy of uh, a section of the register, I believe, which was uh, shared. And so... We would like to have the witness uh, brought into the stand. We will do 